Thank you, Angela. Uh, pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, as always, we're very appreciative of our opportunity to be a partner with Christus uh, and have been for uh, over 20 years. Uh, and it's, it's my pleasure to be able to share with you some of the things that, uh, that B. Braun does to help sustain the environment as well as to help you um, with your patient care and your own nurses. Uh, before we get too deep into it, um, obviously this is becoming uh, an area of increased focus. Uh, so with that, one of the things I wanted to call out is some uh, recent articles that we're seeing as we're working in this market space. Uh, the first one is released. Uh, this was a health trust sponsored document. Uh, and this is available in the Q3 of 2021, uh, talking about DEHP exposure and PVC exposure to the clinic, to the NICU patient populations that are out there. Um, this is a very specific uh, concern, but it is an environmental concern as well as a patient safety concern. Uh, another one that's been out recently, and this is more just an example, there are other uh, initiatives that are out there. And I picked this one out because um, it's with a different GPO, but it's very relevant to the way I think things are, are headed uh, in that we're starting to identify, if you see here, I've got my little pointer to try to highlight this, um, the various chemicals that someone can be exposed to, and then breaking those out in terms of what kind of uh, impact they have on both your clinicians who are exposed to them, as well as the patients. Uh, and if you look in here, one of the ones that keeps showing up repeatedly is PVC. PVC, PVC, phthalates, which is part of the PVC process, PVC, phthalates, PVC. So uh, as we go forward with this, we can certainly anticipate there's going to be a lot of effort that's made in eliminating some of these chemical exposures as part of the supply chain management that's going on. As we go forward with that, B. Braun is very proactive in the way we do these things, and we're going to be making sure that we're ahead of this or, or paying close attention to what the, uh, what the environmental impact and patient safety impacts will be of the products that we, re, uh, that we produce. Uh, first off, I wanna uh, kind of start with uh, a little bit of our, of our brag book. Uh, from a patient safety standpoint, uh, we were the first IV fluid manufacturer to uh, start producing IV fluids without PVC and phthalates. Um, actually, I don't know the exact date, but it goes all the way clear back to the 70s. As you'll see, we have some stuff about incineration, and obviously incineration was, is no longer uh, a practice in hospital care. Uh, but back in the day, the uh, concern was over uh, chlorine exposure and, and acid rain, and that just kind of morphed uh, to PVC and phthalates exposure over the course of the, of, the, of the time that these plastics have been in the marketplace. Uh, recently, uh, this is as of uh, 2020, we have invested about a billion dollars in local uh, US, meaning US-based, contiguous US-based uh, manufacturing of DEHP and pv 33 fluids. Uh, that is a secondary plant that's gonna be opened in uh, Daytona, Florida. Uh, we are also the only supplier of a fully PVC and phthalate-free IV fluids line. Uh, and that's uh, just, uh, again, it's a uh, commitment that we've had for a very, very long time. And we're grateful that you guys have been taking advantage of that because it's good for our patients. Uh, we also have a dedicated team that looks for ways to uh, minimize um, all sorts of stuff. And again, uh, this goes to other things like the, the latex sensitivities and, and other stuff like that. But um, it also includes the PVC and the phthalates exposures that, again, we're seeing a lot of focus on uh, more recently. Uh, as you look at this as environmental brought we reuse or recycle almost all of our uh, recyclable materials. We do not throw away something that can be recycled. Uh, we have a, a pretty robust uh, regrind facility at our Allentown and uh, California facilities for reusing our plastics. Uh, and we have been landfill free in both Pennsylvania and California where our primary productions are uh, since 2014 in both of those uh, states. So um, that's just more uh, of what we're doing to help sustain the environment. Uh, and here's, uh, again, this is one that kind of gets back into, into a little bit of a precursor. Again, the, the, uh, the original genesis of a PVC-free bag was about um, minimizing exposure to hydrochlorine gas uh, as a result of uh, incineration. That's no longer there, uh, but that chlorine is still trapped in those plastics and it's still put into landfills. Uh, and when you look at the way our waste is calculated, uh, we say approximately 30% less, um, you know, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, landfill space that's taken up uh, as a result of that. And uh, Angela has done a study on that that shows how much uh, we've saved. I believe we came up with somewhere between six, um, uh, three and six dump trucks full of, uh, of waste every year that we avoid by using this formulation of an IV bag. So 
uh, in the course of that 20 years, that makes somewhere around 60 to 120 dump trucks full of trash that have not ended up in a landfill. Um, moving on, we want to talk a little bit about uh, DEHP exposure. This is a, a 2008 uh, Congress has banned children's toys and child care articles with concentrations of DEHP. Uh, most people are familiar with the BPA because uh, that's what shows up in your um, consumer products like your saran wrap and your uh, your um, Ziploc bags and stuff like that, but uh, this is now making its way out there uh, as DEHP exposure is becoming more um, more prominent or more more widely understood. We're seeing that DEHP is following the BPA bans uh, that were really popular in the late 90s, early early 2000 timeframe. Um, as we see down here, this is kind of an interesting slide, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this a little bit. Uh, we've actually got some estimates of what a patient is exposed to every day as a result of the various therapies that they could be receiving. So a NICU patient who is receiving an IV sedative, TPN, and some sort of transfusion, a blood transfusion, uh, uh, for example, could be exposed to as much as 2.8 milligrams per kilogram per day um, of, of DEHP products. And again, this is something that uh, we, we reduce by not allowing that in the IV bags that you use. Moving, moving along, uh, here's a little bit more about what the PVC DEHP exposure, uh, where those um, impacts are. Uh, it's obvious that a critically ill neonate is gonna receive a lot of IV fluids. Uh, pregnant and lactating women are also likely to be exposing their, uh, their unborn children to this or their newly born children to, it, to this. Of course, pediatric patients or adolescent boys, peritoneal dialysis or chemotherapy. I, I apologize for reading that slide, but each of those therapies right now um, puts a lot of DEHP in, potentially into the bloodstream of a developing patient. Um, the, the, the DEHP effects uh, of, have been shown as a probable carcinogen as well as likely to be contributing to reproductive development issues, especially in young boys. Uh, and then one more thing that's here, uh, and, and again, this is um, more just a study of, uh, of how do we protect our patients. This is uh, uh, the size of our IV catheter, but additionally, uh, some things that we do to make sure that our IV catheter gets used effectively on the first go. Um, this is some, it, it's also a DEHP free product. So again, it's just another way that we're reducing what somebody is exposed to. But as you can see here, very, very small catheters. And uh, really what I wanted to do was show the, uh, the disposal side of this. Uh, when we generate Sharps disposals, everybody's very familiar with this, but Sharps takes up a lot of space because we have to protect from, being needles, uh, from having needle sticks. If, if you look down at the bottom, what we're showing is the same 25 safety catheters in a Sharps container. Uh, here's ours at 0.87 ounces of weight and about half of the Sharps container. Uh, here's the BD Inside Auto Guard, the Smith's Protect IV Plus, and between these three catheters, that's about 98% of the IV catheter market that's out there. So clearly, uh, our focus to environmental and patient safety goes well beyond just uh, simple things like not having the plastics. We also look at how we design the product so that it can be used more effectively. Um, with that, again, very short. Uh, oh, I did. I'm sorry. I had one more slide that I included in here. Um, this is something that is also becoming a, a, a little bit of an increased focus as well for uh, by ECRI. Um, and this has more to do with um, this slide actually is more to do with the idea of um, patient safety and patient uh, patient harm that's associated with multiple IV sticks. Uh, as well as the waste that's associated with it. It kind of fit in with this category. So I went ahead and I stuck it in here as well, just so we could see. Uh, this is a really nice uh, study. The, the MAGIC um, is a, a good resource for clinicians who are making IV starts, and uh, it can be very helpful in maximizing the length of a stay based on the selection of their IV site their IV catheter, what they, and how they go about making the, the IV start. Um, the, the last one on here is visualization technology. And that's just about looking at where the site is, all designed to minimize the amount of waste associated with that. Again, kind of a, a little bit of a stretch on that, but I felt like it was important based on some of the other factors that were. So with that, I wanted to say thank you. I know that was really, really quick. Um, I guess I can open this up. Angela, if you wanted to have any kind of dialogue or follow up to any of the questions or, or any of the statements that I showed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, to the both of you. Uh, my curiosity is if the reporting that you give to us also kind of highlights opportunities 
uh, to continue to, to broaden our partnership with you all. So at this point, um, again, this is kind of a newer science for us. So we had not included anything that would, I think would count as um, an opportunity moving forward. Um, clearly uh, anywhere where there's the IV fluids, if you're, uh, if you're not using a DEHP or PVC free bag, uh, clearly that's gonna present an opportunity for you. Um, because of the time that we find ourselves in, the COVID time that we're in, uh, we know that the reality is there are some of those bags that are being used. And all I can say is, you know, in, in times of crisis, we all do what we have to do to, to maintain good patient care. Um, then the only other one would be, again, just, um, you know, some other, some other products that are out there in our, in our portfolio. We're always, well, you know, always willing to have a, a review. And that's actually where, where David comes in. I, I didn't really introduce David. David kind of is a worker behind the scenes on this, but um, he also helps to identify all sorts of opportunities, whether they're financial or uh, patient care initiative, or in this case, environmental. We, we have about a, um, somewhere between a quarterly and an annual business review. Again, uh, given the, the times that we found ourselves in, it hasn't been quite quarterly, but we do meet with your supply chain leadership and uh, present some, uh, some opportunities along the way. And again, that okay. would be a lead driven thing. That's good to know. Okay, so then you coordinate with our supply chain folks in order to identify those opportunities. That's good to know. Yeah, and, and, uh, and one of the reasons why David's engaged on that is he's, um, he actually represents the broader book of business with B. Braun. B. Braun is actually comprised of um, not just the B. Braun book of uh, business, but we also have the Asculap and the CAPS um, um, companies that are part of the B. Braun um, I guess conglomerate. Uh, that's that's who we represent. So ABC, Asculap, Bebron, and Caps. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we have that broader spectrum, uh, David's able to kind of go across a, a bigger skew and and help uh, maximize the benefit of the time that's spent uh, in, engaged with us. And so where I plug in on that is things like this, where we're talking specific to IV therapies. Um, that's going to be something that I specialize in for you guys. Wonderful. I didn't have any other questions. Did you all have any uh, closing remarks or or no? I don't no, this is this is this is David. I'll just jump in and say again, we do work with you all across the whole portfolio, as Chris mentioned. So even in our pain control products, we're very focused on using latex-free, DEHP-free product as well. And and likewise with Esculap, we provide sterilization containers that allow for you to use the container versus blue wrap. And we know that blue wrap becomes a medical waste product as well. So there are many different ways we work with you guys at Christus to make sure we're trying to impact the environment to the best of our abilities. Wonderful. Thank you all very, very much. I'm grateful that you took out the time to, to speak with us. I'm going to stop the recording so that we can talk about my colleagues behind their back. <laughs> I was just going to say thank you very much. Well, I, I, it's been my pleasure to serve Christus for most of my 20 years with the company. So I really appreciate y'all and everything that y'all do.